Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Cheminets and my power is out. So I'm going to need to get really creative for this month's Dye Pop PS. We're going to try to create something and make it work. Hooey! Uh, yes, the power has been out for over 24 hours uh, and hopefully it'll be coming back soon. But with the holidays and Christmas coming up, uh, I'm running out of time to dye yarn and film conclusions for it. I'm going to go to the library today to edit, but we're going to do something silly and have some fun today because I've already got some yarn pre-soaked and we'll see what I can do without heat. Or at least I'll maybe have to heat set it in the future, but we'll see what we can do. <laughs> so without internet, I haven't been able to log on to Patreon uh, to see and remember the winning inspiration word, but I have a feeling I will take that and incorporate that into next month's Dye Pop PS. But today I think we're just going to go for silly fun and try to create something beautiful. And honestly, I'm kind of enjoying this. <laughs> It's giving me some joy when before I was sad because we were having to throw away everything in the fridge. <laughs> we're starting to also have some daylight in here finally, but here I have some Wool to Die For is That Yak and some Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn pre-soaking. Uh, the Stroll is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon. And I think we're going to try to dye... <laughs> Sorry, construction outside. I think we're going to try to dye some of that today and we're gonna go and play with some food coloring. Side note, I highly recommend these rechargeable, uh, these solar uh, lanterns. They also have a USB charging port. So in theory, we could charge our phones if we needed to, which we haven't needed to, um, but they work great. They collapse, so they travel easily. Um, we use them uh, a lot for a lot of things, but uh, highly recommend. I haven't started dyeing anything yet. Uh, I did spend the morning at the library. Didn't get very much editing done because I forgot my mouse. And turns out it's really hard to edit with the little trackpad on my laptop. I did get some other things done and was able to reply to YouTube comments, but I plan to start dyeing soon. I'm just trying to warm up <laughs> next to my little fire. Uh, thankfully, again, it's not that cold in Massachusetts this week and so, uh, we aren't in any danger or anything. We're not in danger of having pipes burst, thankfully, and things like that. Uh, and we do have places we could go if the house becomes unhabitable. But in theory, they said we should get power back in like an hour and a half. But I drove by where all the down wires are and there were no crews there. So I don't know. But anyway, you're not here for this. You're here to watch me dye some yarn by not candlelight, but by LED light. My kitchen has a lot of natural light, and I think when I'm sitting on camera with my shoebox, looks pretty normal. Uh, but I would say for me, things feel really, really dark because I normally have like a spotlight. It's not a spotlight, it's one of those, but it's a really, really bright LED bulb. So we usually have a lot of light. Anyway, I'm amused. I'm gonna go fill the shoebox up, shoebox, shoebox up with some water. Maybe about half full with water. And I'm gonna get 100 grams of our pre-soaked yarn. Oh, I didn't, I didn't squeeze it out. I am on another level. I haven't checked. I'm pretty sure I do not have any hot water now, though. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, do we need more light? Uh, can't believe I forgot about this light <laughs> while we were uh, working today. So, okay, if I go like this, this feels more accurate with what I am seeing. But I think the camera otherwise does a really good job at correcting. All right, never mind. I'm going to hold on to that. Uh, because maybe we'll use that tonight if the power does not come back. For our dye today, I'm going to bring out the AmeriColor 50 Nifty kit, which took a tumble. It took a tumble recently, and so things are all mixed up. But for our silly fun, I'm randomly going to bring out colors and drop them on. So that was electric orange. I am not looking at the box. Maybe I should make this so you can see there. I'm not looking. I'm just going and grabbing. Okay. What are we? Mauve? Mauve? I'm going to do 
to just one drop. Oh, she's a thick one. Okay, let's see. Ooh, what do we have here? Coral red. I think we're gonna be very warm toned. I would love there to be, ooh, this one is, <laughs> you know, my house is also really cold. I normally keep it pretty cold. Uh, more red, super red. I normally keep my house like in the mid 60s, uh, but given that the we've had no heat for over 24 hours and it's maybe in the mid 40s outside, we're cold. Okay. Oh goody. Uh, mint green. And I'm checking to see. I wonder if it has any, because the one color I definitely wouldn't use would be bright white, which just has, and I'm totally blanking on what it is, titanium dioxide. That is the pigment that doesn't really work. Now, colors are all about proportions, and so this is called mint green, and the color did have some brightness to it, I guess, which is not something that we should worry about. Okay, not looking. I already did super red, I think. Navy blue. Ooh, I think this is a color that has blue number two, and it's one that I like. I'm using a lot of it. Ooh, what other colors? Do, 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 do. Uh, I'm trying to not look. Okay, slate. Ooh. It's funny because I'm not shaking these up very much, but some of them, okay, this one fell over. We're going to use some teal. Uh, <laughs> uh, some of them are like really thick and a little viscous, and others are just really watery. All right, let's do two more colors. I'm gonna grab this one and this one, but I already used navy blue. So we're gonna grab a different one, soft pink. If I can get it out. Whoa, that was a little clogged. The reason why I was bringing up the temperature of my house is not just because this tap water is really cold, but the other issue we might be having is that some of the, I don't know if that's affecting the texture of some of this food coloring. Oh my God. Oh, that's a lot. All right, we have a fair, ooh, and I didn't wear gloves. Got dye all over my hands. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands and then we'll come back before we manipulate this. Okay, now, You'll notice that I did not have the food coloring touch this. Even though this is a batch of food coloring, I use just for dyeing yarn. It's not used for food, but I'm still careful because this is a container I use with acid dyes. And so I try to be careful about contact and whatnot. Ultimately, dyeing yarn with food coloring is just like dyeing yarn with acid dyes. Uh, you need heat, acid, and time. All right, I've got a spoon here. And I'm gonna start attempting to sort of dissolve these dyes a little bit. And oh my gosh, this looks so pretty. I need to get acid, because we don't have any acid in here yet. Oh my gosh, the like localized little spread of these colors looks amazing. I don't know how much these are gonna blend. And I can tell you from over here, I do see white down here. I'll show you that in a moment. But first, we're gonna bring over some acid and I'm gonna just start with like two and a half tablespoons of white vinegar. Uh, so that way we have that acid there. But I wanna show you the side. So you can see that we still have a bunch of white down there. We did get really great coverage along the top, and if I move things, we are able to move that color down. And I'm gonna kinda do this over here, but that doesn't tell us what's happening sort of in the center or beneath anything. Okay, now that I moved things a little bit, I'm bringing over more acid because, and I'm not really counting, but I'm adding a lot because I want these colors to start striking where they are a little bit. I know we'll be moving things a bit, and I'm trying to also help move some of the color down, but I wanna keep some of this uniqueness to it as well. But if I look, I mean, there's tons of pigment. 
just everywhere. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm just going to leave this spoon in there. And I was going to set a timer. I don't have a timer. I don't have my timer. Oh. But what I can do is because I see some white down there, I can try to just sort of like help that. Now, we could pick everything up and move it, and I think that that would be really pretty. Clearly, some of these colors are spreading uh, with time, but I do want to give it a little bit of time just to see what will happen. Because this is fun and random, and oh my goodness. Is it warmer outside or inside right now? That I don't know. This water is quite cold. Okay, I'm gonna do one more because I see big white patch on that side. One more move. And then I am going to set a timer on my phone because it's not usually the way I do things, but I think that'll, that, I mean, obviously it would work. Um, I set a timer for 15 minutes. Uh, and so then we'll come back. I'm expecting to see tons of color in the liquid though uh, because we have no heat, but we'll check in. With five minutes left on my timer, I got a new updated ETA of 9 p.m. for power coming back. Now, in theory, all morning, I thought power was going to be back in about 30 more minutes. And so I was so excited. At least I'm excited by the yarn, and so that's keeping me going. Okay, we still have a ton of color in here, and that's pretty dark. This is more red. Um, that is gloopy. Oh, interesting. That's more blue. Some colors, I think, have struck a little bit, some of the reds, but a lot probably haven't. I'm gonna cover this, and I'm gonna set it aside indoors. I consider taking it outside, but I think it might get to be freezing tonight. So we'll see where we are tomorrow morning, and hopefully I'll have power. At 8 p.m. last night, we got power back, Woohoo! But now let's go look at our yard. Okay, let's see where we are. I see some undissolved clumps, but otherwise things are mostly clear. Not perfect, but mostly. So what I wanna do is before we, uh, yes, before we go steam it, I want to rinse it a little bit. Check it out, we have some pastels left. Oh, that's pretty. My rationale for rinsing it is just to get those clumps of dye out so we don't stain stuff later on. I know that we'll have some bleeding because the color has not been completely set yet, but I'm just trying to rinse off any clumpy bits which didn't seem to be so bad. But now I do wanna add acid back into the yarn. And so I've got what's left in this little cup. And we're gonna add some water in. Just so that way we can actually go set the color. But this is pretty for like a totally random fly by the seat of my pants colorway. And now I'm gonna take our yarn, squeeze out a little bit of it. A little, that, a little bit of that liquid, but we're gonna pop it into a steamer basket. I do need to find my lid. I don't think this is the right lid. No. Got it. That was harder than I expected. Now, as for our water here, there's a hint of some pink in it uh, from what we were rinsing, which I just wanted to show. But anyway, I'm gonna steam set this for 30 minutes. If I had not been using tools and equipment that I use for dyeing yarn with acid dyes, then I might have gone ahead and microwaved this yarn. Um, but I don't like to put anything that isn't completely food safe in my microwave. So anyway, steamer basket it is. We'll be back in 30 minutes. Okay, it has been 30 minutes. We are nice and steamy. Ooh, look at the like different colors we have in here. This is so fun and random and is making me happy. I am now going to set our yarn aside so it can cool completely and then we can wash it. Let's wash our yarn just 
in this container because why not? I've already washed it and removed all of the residual dye, and since it was still in the sink, I figured that this made some sense. Oh my gosh, I love the like subtle shifts of color here. This yarn looks like something that I could have had with acid dyes. It's amazing that this is food coloring uh, and randomly selected colors. Now, the reason why I was not worried about randomly selected colors as I add some dish soap turning out really ugly with this food coloring colorway is that there are, well, in the AmeriColor set, six colors of food coloring that all of those 50 colors are some combination of. Uh, there's two reds, red three, red 40, two yellows, yellow five, yellow six. There's blue one and a little bit of blue two in one of the colors. And so all of those colors will combine to things that are pretty. And so since I knew that, I therefore thought that we could just have silly fun, even though I technically could see, but we were dying in the dark. Uh, there's basically no color coming out. I think that the pre-rinse to remove things really helped, and you'll be happy to note that my hands are dye-free after yesterday. Uh, so anyway, I'm now gonna go put this yarn through my spin dryer, and then we'll hang it up to dry. It's amazing the things that you take for granted, but I am so excited to be in this brightly lit room filming conclusions. I think that this yarn that I created is beautiful. I didn't exactly create it blind because I could have seen and picked the colors, but picking them randomly without intentionally selecting them gave us this gorgeous rainbow confection of colors. Now, I've done a number of random color picking live streams where I would randomly select the colors I would use for a project. But there I would pick the proportions to create something pretty. Uh, and it is always possible when you randomly select colors that you might not like how things turn out. But today, I think that this is absolutely marvelous. I now want to take this opportunity to thank all of the Chemnitz patrons, including Michelle Martin, Tamara Svanez, Don Jans, Jessica Parco, Karen Siegel, and the rest of the fiber patrons' names you see on the screen right now. Patreon is a really great way that you can help support the content here, and typically patrons vote for the direction of the newest Die Pop PS series, although this month I did have to change gears a little bit. But I hope that you enjoy that I pulled something together. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Chemnitz Patreon, you can find more information at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I started my yarn dyeing journey dyeing yarn with food coloring. <laughs> food coloring dyes yarn using the same mechanism as commercial acid dyes. The main difference is that food coloring molecules have been approved for the consumption of food versus being developed for dyeing textiles. And so they aren't always as light fast as the other pigments that I use from acid dyes. However, as long as you store things out of direct sunlight, you can get wonderful longevity with these colors. And I have items that I wear all the time all winter that were dyed with food coloring over a decade ago. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I post at least twice a week year round and we have so much fun. Thank you so much for watching.